Welcome back to another Millennial In Debt video. Today we're going to be talking about these seven different types of interest that you need to be aware of when borrowing money, loaning money, uh, opening up bank accounts, all those types of things. I am very sorry that my energy is a little low. Um, a lot of a lot of things going on in society right now, but we're gonna stay focused on why we're here for this video. So the first type of interest that we're going to talk about is simple interest. Simple interest is the most basic and most common type of interest when you open up a bank account. And how that goes is you receive one rate, one time based off the term, and that is, that is it doesn't matter anything else really. So for example, if you borrow $100 at a 10% interest rate for the term of one year in that 365 days when you pay it back that following year you will pay $110 and that's that. The next type of interest is compound interest which is the type of interest that our lovely student loans fall under and I've talked about student loan compound interest a couple of different videos so if you're not following the student loan playlist or you want to you know click on that little tab up there please feel free but what compound interest is essentially whatever your balance is and whatever your interest rate is they're going to add that every single day which is why when you pay for example we'll just stick to the hundred dollars if you have a hundred dollars at a seven percent interest rate over those 30 days it's going to add seven percent interest every single day to your $100 and if you're paying the minimum on your student loan payment that is why most of it is going to your interest instead of towards your principal because the minute you pay that next day they've already added more interest so your principal never decreases because all your payments go into your to your principal to your interest sorry and it's annoying and frustrating the next type of interest I did talk about on an Instagram post when I was talking about my mortgage it is amor amortized amortized Let's let's bring it up on Google so I don't sound like a fool on the internet. Amortize. Amortize. Okay, so amortized interest. <laughs> I'm so stupid. Amortized interest or amortization, I think I got that one right, is usually the interest that is used for mortgages, whereas compound interest, like I mentioned, is for student loans, also credit cards, and some savings accounts also use compound interest if we're lucky. Um, but amortization is what the mortgages use, and what that is, and I'll use my myself, and I'll put the post right here if you're not following, you borrow, let's say, $150,000 from the bank for your mortgage, and they set you at a specific interest rate, let's say 3 to 5%, whatever, depending on the market, right? Your payment for your loan will never, ever, 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 ever change. And when you first start out paying most of your payment, let's say your payment is $850, a majority of that payment is going to be going towards the interest for the first couple of years, and based off whatever your scale is, which most mortgages are based on 30 years, as you pay or as you continue to pay, let's say by the 10 year mark or the 15 year mark, you're still going to be paying that same $850. But now what's changing in the, the dynamic of your payment is more of that payment is going towards the principal as opposed to the interest. So although your payment never shifts, the percentage of what's going towards your principal and the percentage of what's going towards your interest will change along the life of your loan or the term of your loan. All right. The... <laughs> The next type of interest is, you gotta make fun of yourself sometimes, um, is fixed interest. So mortgages usually go off of fixed interest rates, although there are different types of interest rates for mortgages. Um, I have a fixed interest rate because my heart can't can't deal with the way the market and things shift. Um, so fixed interest rates benefit people who are borrowing for the most part because your interest will never increase. It also means it'll never decrease. But let me tell you something, it's very, very, very unlikely, especially with the way our economy goes, that interest will decrease. Unlikely. It happens sometimes. Not often. Right? So when you sign a contract or whatever your loan terms are, your interest, let's say it's 3%, will never change no matter what happens over the life of your loan. Car interest rates also usually are like that. No one, I don't know of anyone signing variable car interest loans, which that would be weird. Um, but yeah, so fixed interest rates means your interest rate will never change along the line as long as your loan exists or as long as you're paying it. The next type of interest that's really interesting and really important um, is a prime interest rate. 
And the reason that's important is because I've been seeing a lot of random conversation online about your credit score and your, your credit really doesn't matter anymore. Who, who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Who, who said that lie? Because that's, that's false. Um, prime interest rate is the peak or the best interest rate offered to the top tier uh, credit worthy people. Most of the time, prime rates are going to like banks and corporations, but it still matters to the everyday borrower like us. Um, because, so, okay, let me back it up. Prime rates are set by the federal government, essentially, and those are what they give to the corporations and the banks and all those things. And banks will figure out what that prime rate should be based off how they're lending and borrowing between each other because banks do that. That's what they do with your money. They, you know, gamble around with it. So as that prime rate trickles down to us, the everyday borrower, borrower, it will matter. Uh, it affects the way that we receive different rates as well. So yes, you want to have really good credit and have a good credit score so you can be first in line to get those prime rates that are being offered to the everyday loan taker, loan borrower, whatever. And the last type of interest, which again, doesn't directly affect us, but always indirectly affects us because everything big business and corporations and the government do affects us is a discount rate. So the Federal Reserve, when they give short-term um, loans to different institutions, banks, whatever, they set something called a discount rate, right? A discount rate of interest. And how the federal government kind of calculates this discount rate that they create and give to financial institutions is they do two things. They look at the current value of money, right? What's going on in the economy. And then they look at the volatility or the projection, right? So what the value or risk of losing value on money will be in the future. And that's how they come up with this discount rate interest for when they do short-term loans for financial institutions, which then do loans for us, the borrower. So all of these things matter because everyone wants to make their money back and then some, right? So if the discount rate is lower, then obviously interest rates for us, us the borrower will be lower. If the discount rate is higher, the financial institution is going to still want to have some sort of capital gain, which, you know, terminology you need to be aware of. That's pretty much going to um, direct the loan interest rates that we get as the borrower. Nice and sweet and simple. Done. I hope this video was helpful and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.